One time, I needed to be rescued. I was in a really tight spot and I needed some help. Some friends and I went to explore some caves down in Santa Cruz by UCSE at the university there and we climbed into this small hole in the earth. It was not very big, but we cr climbed into this hole and then we crawled down a long chute into the earth like a rabbit hole just going further and further and down. And this chute led to this series of caves all underneath the ground. We found a room so big that you could stand up in them, you could reach up gigantic rooms. With There's one room, I think it's called the party room, actually. You can just have a bunch of people in this gigantic cave room. There were other spots that were so tight that you had to like lay on your belly. The only way you could get through is to lay on your belly and just like sort of slide through with the, with the tight cave rock all around you like this. At one point, there was a big drop, and I looked it up because I, I couldn't remember how big this drop was, but it's actually like a 100 feet drop inside the earth. But you don't have to just like fall down. You find some handholds and stuff, and there's little ledges that you can get on, and we climbed all the way down to the bottom of this cave, and it's super cool down there. It's very dark, obviously, and back then, this was, this was a long time ago, we didn't have any like headlamps. We just had, some of us had flashlights and some of us were like, I don't know, maybe we weren't thinking about it, so we didn't take them. But there was, it was very dark down there, uh, and it was very wet because it's underneath the earth, and down at the very bottom is this area that's all very clayish, you know? There's lots of clay in the ground, and people take the clay, and they squish it up against the side of the cave walls, and they make faces. They create, so there's a whole room down there. It's called the Hall of Faces that you can see with all of these weird sculptures that people have made, and it felt so cool to be down in the earth and to be hanging out with everybody just... Just, I don't know, we're like, we're in the middle of the world or something. We loved it. And then at some point we said, well, I guess we got to climb back out. And everything was going very well climbing back out until we came to one sort of ledge that we had dropped down from. And it was a skinny area. In order to get back up, this is what my friends were doing. They were putting their arms up through kind of a hole and then they put their elbows down on, on like so the sides, these rocks on each side, and then they would like pull themselves up, almost like you're doing like a pull-up, and you use these muscles right here, right? My friends had no problem doing this. They were, they were like popping up one right after another, like, sure, let's just all do this thing. Okay, so then it's my turn. I hold my arms up, and I get my elbows in the place where they tell me to put my elbows, and I try with all of my might to pull myself up, and I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I tried again. I was straining so hard to pull myself up, and I, but my muscles just weren't strong enough to do this. I had never done anything like that before. And I, even though I had these friends who were amazing, they're like encouraging me, come on, Rob, they're cheering me on. But after a few tries, I realized that I was stuck in the middle of the earth, in this dark cave. I think I was one of the dumb ones who didn't bring a flashlight. And I'm like, I'm going to be here for the rest of my life. How am I ever going to get out of this cave? I can't pull myself out. But I didn't really need to worry because I had these really good friends with me who loved me and they wouldn't just leave me in the cave. So I put my arms up and two of them grabbed my hands and they pulled me up just enough that I could get my hands on instead of my elbows on the rocks. I could get my hands on them and I could pull myself up the rest of the way. And so I was, oh, I was, I was safe. I was going to live. And I made it out of the cave. All because my friends rescued me when I needed help. Today, as we have said, is the fourth Sunday of Advent. And remember, Advent is the season when we look forward to Jesus coming. Of course, his coming at Christmas. But also when he comes again to make all the wrong things in the world right. And what I want to tell you today is very simply this. God loves his people so much that he comes to rescue them, just like my friends rescued me in the cave. We just read a passage in the Bible about a time when Israel was in some serious trouble, like they were in a tight spot, like I was in a tight spot. There was a king of Israel, his name was King Ahaz, and King Ahaz was worried about two other nations, two other countries coming to fight against Israel. And he thought, this is, this is not good, we don't know how to, how to deal with this. He's worrying about these two nations. And a prophet named Isaiah tells him, look, 
the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Isaiah was telling King Ahaz, God is going to send a rescuer to Israel. You don't need to worry about these two nations. Well, King Ahaz kept worrying, unfortunately, and he was not somebody, he's in the Bible, they say that he was one of the bad kings because he didn't really listen to what Isaiah was saying. But Isaiah is saying, God will send a rescuer if you will only believe him because God loves his people so much, he will come to rescue them. It's what he does. He's a rescuer. Well, 700 years later, after King Ahaz, God's people needed rescue again. But this time, not just from a fight with another country, but from the thing that makes people want to fight in the first place. They needed rescue from sin. Sin, you remember, is that thing that like knocks us out of alignment with all the good that God has for us in our lives. And they needed rescue from that because God wanted them to have all of his good blessings. So God chose a girl named Mary to be the rescuer's mom. The only problem is that Mary and her fiance Joseph, they aren't married yet. So Joseph thinks that she's done something wrong and he doesn't think he should marry her anymore. He thinks, well, I, 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 don't, I don't think I should be marry her at all. But then one night, an angel tells Joseph in his dream, he says, don't be afraid to get married because Mary's baby is actually from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus. Why? For he will save his people from their sins. The name Jesus means God saves. God will save his people from their sins. Jesus is God's rescuer who saves you and me from our sin. And then the Bible says, right after that, it says, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Who was the prophet? Isaiah. Isaiah was the prophet. And what did the prophet say? He said, behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. It turns out, when Isaiah spoke 700 years ago, he wasn't just talking about a rescue from other nations. He was also talking about rescue from sin. And he even explained how it would happen. A virgin, someone who couldn't have a baby yet, it would be impossible, she would get pregnant. And the baby, the rescuer, would be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. My brothers and sisters, do you know today we light this candle for love because God cares for his people so much that he himself became a human being to personally rescue us from our sin. John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Life, life knowing God, knowing his son. God knows people are stuck in sin, like I was stuck in a cave. But he doesn't just leave us. He's the best of friends and fathers. He loves us so much that he himself comes to the rescue. Come then, Lord Jesus. Amen.